In other news this morning, Tata Steel is expected to confirm today that it's cutting 1,200 jobs in Scunthorpe and Lanarkshire. Other news is the latest in a series of redundancies across the steel industry. Cheap imports, especially from China, are being blamed for the crisis. Well, Sarah Corker is at the Tata plant in Scunthorpe for us this morning, where I think people are feeling pretty grim. Morning, Sarah. Yeah, morning to you both. Still workers are just starting to arrive here this morning. They know bad news is on the way and the question is how many jobs will go. Now, Tata Steel is the town's biggest employer and it's fair to say that Scunthorpe has a heart of steel. Now between 800 to 1,000 jobs are at risk here. That's a quarter of the workforce. Job losses are also expected at sites in Scotland. And one worker I spoke to, he told me he's the third generation generation of his family to work at this site. He said this job is his life and he doesn't know what else he'll do. He's dreading the news today. Sarah, thanks very much. Sarah Corker in Scunthorpe. We will be talking to the Assistant General Secretary of the uh, Trade Union Congress, the TUC, about what should be done next in about 10 minutes. In other news this morning, Tata Steel is expected to confirm today that it's cutting 1,200 jobs in Scunthorpe and Lanarkshire. The news is the latest in a series of redundancies across the steel industry. Cheap imports, especially from China, are being blamed for the crisis. Well, Sarah Corker is at the Tata plant in Scunthorpe for us now. Morning, Sarah. Tough times ahead for people there. Yes, morning. Workers are just starting to arrive here this morning. They know that bad news is on the way. The question is how many jobs will go. Tata Steel is the town's biggest employer. Between 800 to 1,000 jobs are at risk here. Well, I'm joined now by Martin Foster from the Unite Union. Martin, what's the mood like for workers? Uh, they're very worried. Um, they're very uncertain uh, about what's going to happen this morning. Uh, they're all wondering, is it going to be me? Um, so, yeah, we, we, we're expecting the announcement sort of mid-morning time, so we'll, we'll know then how bad the news is. And this is a town very much built on steel. It's at the heart of the community here. How will the town cope with job losses on this scale? Um, it will be difficult. Um, you know, we, we've been through this before. Uh, we've lost jobs before, but this time it has a different feel about it. Um, we're, we're expecting that it will impact the local economy and uh, not just supplies for this site but also local businesses, uh, the town centre, the lack of footfall in the shops, you know, it, it will have an impact locally. And Scunthorpe Steelworks is finding it difficult to compete, isn't it? It's the global economy bearing down on the local workforce. Absolutely, yeah, they, you know, they're, they're suffering from things that are beyond their control that we can do nothing about. Um, the only people that can do this are the people in number 10. Um, you know, we're relying on them. Martin, thanks very much for joining us. Well, 4,000 people work at the site here and they'll be briefed at 9.45 by Tata Steel. Then they will find out how many jobs will be lost today. Sarah, thanks very much. Sarah Corker in Scunthorpe. Well, the Prime Minister says he will bring up the issue of steel with the Chinese president who's arrived in the UK to start his four-day state visit. These pictures of him arriving with his wife in London contain flashing images. It's hoped the trip will lead to more than £30 billion worth of trade and investment deals. Speaking earlier on Breakfast, Foreign Secretary Philip Hammond told us that China's human rights record will also be discussed. We will certainly take the opportunity to raise uh, issues which uh, will be uncomfortable uh, with our Chinese partners during this visit. And it's not just during visits like this. We actually have a formal human rights dialogue. We meet once a year in a UK-China uh, format to talk about nothing except human rights. It's very much on the agenda. Well, this morning, President Xi will uh, join a carriage procession along the Mall to Buckingham Palace, where he'll meet the Queen. Our royal correspondent, Daniela Ralph, is there for us this morning. Uh, morning to you, Daniela. So what do you think is most significant today, I guess? Well, today really is very much about the pomp and the pageantry. The coming days will be about trade, about politics, about diplomacy. But today is about the ceremonial welcome for the Chinese president. Later on this morning, he will come to Horse Guards Parade just down from Buckingham Palace here, where he'll get the full welcome, a guard of honour. The Chinese national anthem will be played. And then there will be that grand state procession, uh, the state carriage procession up the mall to Buckingham Palace here. It's then a busy afternoon for him. He has lunch with the Queen. Uh, there is then an address to the House 
Houses of Parliament, tea with the Prince of Wales. He will then meet the Chinese President, Jeremy Corbyn. Um, that is very much part of the choreography of a state visit, but it will be the leader of the opposition's best chance to air any grievances he has about the Chinese regime and their human rights record. And then this evening, the set piece, the grand set piece of any state visit, the state banquet here at Buckingham Palace, hosted by the Queen with the Chinese president as the guest of honour. Now, the Prince of Wales will not be attending that banquet. The heir to the throne will not be there. Um, his office haven't really given a full explanation as to why not. Instead, they say they are focusing on the number of events he will attend with the Chinese president over the coming days. Danielle Ralph, thank you.